Welcome, welcome, welcome to Thursday night Bible study with me, Tracy Coaston. I know that y'all are seeing my name on Facebook as Trend Life, but I promise I am Tracy. We're still working on getting the name worked out. If you were with me last week, then you heard the story of what happened um, with just all the craziness of a hacker taking over, but praise the Lord, we have it back. So if you are just jumping on, then please say hello and let me know where you are watching from. We're going to be going through um, some chapters of Psalm. We are working our way through this entire book. It's a very long book of the Bible, but I'm dedicated to reading this with you all, studying it, and sharing what the Lord says. So please let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if the sound is coming through, crystal clear, all of that. Um, and of course, let me know if you are brand new, if you've never seen me before, then I want to welcome you to this broadcast as well. Um, and please, please, please let me know, um, if you have caught these lives before and, um, because I'm going to be talking a lot about um, the books of the Bible, and then in a couple of weeks, we're going to be going, um, I'm going to be sharing a special, a special message with you guys um, about just my one-year journey of being on social media, sharing the gospel, what that has been like, what the Lord has taught me through all of that, plus some more. So I'm going to give just a couple minutes as you guys jump on. I'm going to throw this in the chat here for you guys as well. And then let's get started. So I'm going to pray for you all, and um, let's we'll start in Psalms 19 after that. So Father God, I thank you so much for every single person who is watching tonight. I thank you, Lord, that they are taking time out of their day to study your word. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you bring revelation through your word tonight. I pray that you speak to us and let us know exactly what it is that you want us to receive tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. Amen. All right, say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. Hi, Jack. Hi, Lori. Hi, Vaughn. Hi, Stella. Thank you so much for jumping on. And here we go, getting started with Psalms chapter 19. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. We have 30 people watching. Thank you guys so much for jumping on. I want you to pay attention to this in verse 7. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Hi, Bob and Cher. Thanks for jumping on. The soul, if you didn't know, is your mind, will, and emotion. So a lot of people will confuse your soul and your spirit. But the Bible says the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. That means if you are struggling with your emotions or maybe with your the way that you think or your mindset, then you need to get into the Word of God. Because when you get into the Word of God, it will revive whatever has been shut down in you. And so get into God's word like we're doing tonight and let it wash over you and pray that the Holy Spirit will bring you revelation because as you read it, it is what you need to get out of that, out of that depression, out of that anxiety, out of whatever it is that you're struggling with emotionally or um, in your mindset, in your thought process, then you need to get the word of God inside of you and have it come alive. Amen. Hi, Pat. Thanks for watching. If you're watching and um, this is 
and you've watched before, then please share it so that other people can jump on and hear the word of the Lord as well. If you believe that the word itself, not me talking, not me teaching, but just reading the pure word of God in and of itself has power to change lives, then please share this broadcast because I know it's changed mine and many other testimonies that I get from people. So here we go. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. They're a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Hi, Deborah. I'm really glad that you're here. Stay on because I'm going to be praying for people at the end. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. If you didn't know, this is a prayer that you can pray at any time and just say, Lord, I'm sure that there are things that I am hiding from you. I'm sure that there are things that I'm even hiding from myself. But Lord, I want to be cleansed of those. Hi, Aaron. Thanks for jumping on. I want to be cleansed of those. And he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins. And verse 13 says, keep your servant from deliberate sins, from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Hi, Nikki. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Hi, Colt. Thank you, everybody who is sharing. I'm glad you're here, Jim. Thanks for jumping on. This is a scripture that you should memorize. If you're not used to memorizing scripture, it's so good to get it inside of you so that the Holy Spirit can bring it to your remembrance anytime that it's needed to lift you up, to encourage you. Um, earlier in the Psalms, we came across a scripture that said, Lord, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So just by having the word inside of you can keep you from these sins. And verse 14 is one of my favorite all-time verses. Hi, Michael. Don't forget to let me know, everybody, where you're watching from. Verse 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is a prayer that I pray often because I want my mouth to always be speaking truth, always speaking encouragement, always speaking what is going to be pleasing to the Lord. And even what is happening in my heart, because ultimately out of the abundance of the heart is what the mouth speaks. So by praying over your mouth, by praying over the meditation of your heart, you are asking the Lord, asking Holy Spirit to help you keep those things in check. Amen. So write that down. Psalms chapter 19, verse 14. If you're going to memorize a scripture today, let it be that one. All right. Thank you for those of you jumping on. We're going into chapter 20, Psalms tap, chapter 20. And let me know if you're new watching. Hi, everybody. Thanks for letting me know where you're watching from. Thanks for liking and sharing and literally sharing the word of God online. Okay. Chapter 20, verse 1. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. And this is my prayer for all of you. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. Woo, if you receive that, type amen in the chat. That is such a powerful prayer. You could send that to somebody who you know needs to hear that. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. I'm glad you're on, Karen. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Hi, Angela. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. Those are sacrifices that you make for the Lord. Verse 4, may he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Hi, Dale. I'm glad you're watching. Verse 6, now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. 
He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses or their military power, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise and stand firm. Give victory to our king, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. Now listen and pay attention to this. Verse 9, the end of that chapter, says, Give victory. This is King David asking, Give victory, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. But listen to what he said just a couple of verses earlier than that. He said, Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. So even before, this is important because all these shorts, all these videos that I put out that you may have seen where I'm talking about, we need to build our faith, right? Hi, James. We need to pay attention because David is operating with this spirit of faith. So before he even asks, give victory to our king, Lord, answer our cry for help, he is speaking victory from the beginning and speaking what he knows of the Lord. I know that the Lord rescues his anointed, right? I know that the Lord rescues because that's a part of God's name, who he is. He is a rescuer. He is a deliverer. So if that encourages you, you need to learn how to speak your victory before you see your victory. Type that in the chat. I will speak my victory before I see my victory. And that is faith. Putting your faith in who God is in his character despite the circumstances around you. Make sure that you stay to the end because I'm going to be praying over you, all of you who need prayer. I will be happily doing that. So let's move into Psalms chapter 21. If this is encouraging you, type an amen in the chat and please share it for somebody else who needs to hear the word of God tonight. That will be huge. Thank you for liking and commenting as well, all of you. It's such a blessing to be on. Okay, Psalms 21. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. If you need to learn how to rejoice in the strength or rejoice in the Lord, you need to read the Psalms. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. So some people say it doesn't take all shouting and, and you know, singing loudly and we can just be reverent. And there, are, there is a time for both. In the Psalms, it talks a lot about shouting and lifting your voice up loudly. We shout with joy because you give us victory. Verse 2, for you have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. When God answers your prayer, when you do finally get to see it come to pass in the natural, then this is how you should respond. This is how we need to show the Lord that we are thankful every time that he comes through and does what he does on our behalf. Listen to how he praises the Lord. You have given him his heart's desire. You have withheld nothing he requested. And here's another uh, quick tip for when you are reading the Bible and learning how to pray and learning how to study. Put yourself in these situations in the sense of every time that it's talking about King David is talking about himself. He says, how the king rejoices in your strength. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. You have withheld nothing he requested. Put yourself in these scriptures and speak them out loud. Say, how I rejoice in your strength, O Lord. I shout with joy because you gave me victory. You have given me my heart's desire. You have withheld nothing that I requested. So it gives a personal touch. It's you speaking the word of God back to the heart of God. And that is incredibly powerful. Okay. If that helped you type amen in the chat. Verse three, you welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You placed a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on forever. Your victory brings him great honor and you have clothed him with splendor and majesty. You have endowed him with eternal blessings and given him the joy of your presence. There is always joy when you are in the presence of the Lord. The fullness of joy, the Bible says, is in the presence of the Lord. So you've given him the joy of your presence. Why? For the king, 
or if you're going to replace it with yourself, for I trust in the Lord. Type in the chat, I trust in the Lord. That is why all of those things, that is why God gave him victory. That is why God gave him um, prosperity and success and placed a crown on his head. That's why he preserved his life. That is why he uh, withheld nothing that he requested because he trusted in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep you from stumbling or keep him from struggling stumbling. Verse eight, you will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. You will throw them in a flaming furnace. When you appear, the Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. You will wipe their children from the face of the earth. They will never have descendants. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed for they will turn and run when they see your arrows aimed at them. Rise up, O Lord, in all your power. With music and singing, we celebrate your mighty acts. Powerful. Psalm 22. If this is helping you, let me know. Thank you for sharing. Psalm 22. My God, my, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Now that might sound familiar to a lot of you who are familiar with the Gospels. Because Jesus quotes this scripture when he is hanging on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me right before he gives up his spirit? And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to read this chapter and then we'll talk about this. Why did Jesus quote this scripture? Okay, so let's get into it. Verse one, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far from me when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. So this is David being very honest with his struggles. It's okay to be honest with God of how you feel. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praise as on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. Type in the chat. I will trust in God and I will never be disgraced. Verse six, but I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. That's also a very unique scripture. And I'm going to be uh, doing probably an entire teaching just on that one scripture. Uh, but that's for another night. Verse seven, everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and led me to trust you at my mother's breast. I was thrust into your arms at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. Do not stay far from me for trouble is near and no one else can help me. My enemies surround me like a herd of bulls. Fierce bulls of Bashan have hemmed me in. Remember that Jesus quoted this scripture at his death, so pay attention. Like lions, they open their jaws against me, roaring and tearing into their prey. My life is poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. Does that sound familiar? I can count on my bones. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments, again, familiar, among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. O oh Lord, do not stay far away. You are my strength. Come quickly to my aid. Save me from the sword, spare my precious life from these dogs, snatch me from the lion's jaws and from the horns of these wild oxen. I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. Praise the Lord, all you who fear him, honor him, all you descendants of Jacob. Show him reverence, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not ignored or belittled 
the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them, but he has listened to their cries for help. If you feel like you have been crying out to the Lord and you have been ignored, let this verse sink in for you. God has not ignored or belittled your suffering, and he has not turned his back on you, and he listens to your cries for help. Verse 25, I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him for royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Let the rich of the earth feast and worship. Bow before him all who are mortal, all whose lives will end as dust. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. When we read through that scripture, there were many moments that are a prophetic telling of what Jesus did at the cross. And Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And at that time, people, um, the Jewish leaders, they would all know this scripture. Just by him quoting that very first verse, they would know the, the whole thing. They would know everything that came after. And so by Jesus pointing this out, he is helping them see that what was happening with David at that time was more metaphorical with his enemies and what was happening. But what was happening with Jesus was very, very real. And it was like taking the veil off of their eyes to allow them to see that they were the ones who were dividing the garments among themselves, that they were throwing dice for his clothing, that they were the being the enemies of God in that moment. So it's really powerful because I never knew, I never realized that until I was studying um, over this chapter and realizing that Jesus was exposing that all the people who were putting him up on the cross, everything they, that they were doing, that they were, they needed to put themselves in this scripture and see themselves for who they were, which was a sinner and an enemy of God. But that's why he was dying for them. As even as he was pointing this out to them, he's saying that is the point of me coming. Right. And even things like this scripture in verse eight, where it says, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. It was even something that they spoke to Jesus. Again, this was a very prophetic Psalm because they spoke that to Jesus on the cross. You know, if you are the son of God, then let God, you know, get, save yourself, come down from there, come down from the cross. And they mocked him and Jesus let the mocking go on and all of that almost to the very, very end when he points this out and says, and quotes this prophetic scripture. And of course, it says an evil gang closes in on me and they have pierced my hands and my feet and I can count all my bones, right? And we knew that he was um, beaten and bruised and he was probably um, very emaciated. And so all of this scripture just points to Jesus coming and what he did on the cross um, very exposing for the people who were watching. And I believe that's part of why um, so many in that moment or however many, you know, said, surely this, this is the son of God because they had that moment where the scripture, the prophetic scripture lined up what was happening in the natural and then the natural earth literally responded in darkness and earthquakes and the tearing of the veil and everything um, that took place after Jesus's death. So very, very powerful prophetic um, in the Psalms. And so, like I said, there's, there's that line in there about, I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all, which is also very um, prophetic when you break it down. And I'll go into that another time, but um
I'm feeling like I need to pause here just to speak to anybody who is like jumping on and is feeling like, I don't know how this popped up on my feed. I don't know who this girl is. Um, my name isn't even <laughs> right right now on Facebook. Um, I'm Tracy, but I just want you to know that it's not an accident that you came across this broadcast tonight. And if this is you, if I'm speaking to you and you're wondering, you know, I don't listen to the Bible, but I've been curious about it or I've been wanting to read it or I've been wanting to learn more about God and I don't know why you popped up on my feed, but here you are and you're talking about God and you're reading the Bible. Um, I just want you to know that that's the Holy Spirit. That is God reaching out to you and saying, here is your opportunity to hear about me because he loves you and he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He wants you all to know that he is real. So if you are just seeing this for the first time, maybe somebody shared it and maybe you saw it that way, um, or maybe it just popped up, um, then I want you to know that this was for you tonight and that the Lord is speaking to you. And if you have never heard the story of how Jesus came and died on the cross and he is, he rose from the dead three days later, all to give himself for our sins, for this, for anybody who would call upon his name, that anybody who calls upon his name can be saved, that they repent from their sins, that they turn from their ways by fixing their eyes on Jesus and receiving him as their savior. Then I want you to just pray this with me right now, because I believe that the Lord is reaching so many people online because time is getting short it is getting shorter and shorter until jesus christ comes back and he doesn't want to come back and see anybody perish he wants to have them all as a family and um, with him in heaven one day so if this is you then i just want you to type in the chat this is me and pray this with me right now even if you need to recommit your life to the lord if you have drifted away from the lord and you feel like i'm not walking the path that i want to be walking i want to be close to the lord i want to hear his voice then let me pray with you right now so father god in the name of jesus Lord, I pray for this person who is watching this broadcast right now. God, I thank you that they came across it at the right time, Father, that you have reached out your hand to them. And I thank you that they are ready to receive all of who you are. And so right now you can, you can pray this after me and just say, Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I repent, I recognize that I am a sinner and that I need saving, that I am not right with God. But I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead three days later and I receive his salvation right now by placing my trust in him. And I call him my Lord, that I will follow him all the days of my life and I receive the Holy Spirit to help me walk in victory over sin and I will never turn back. I thank you for making me your child tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God, I saw many of you comment and say that this is for me, that um, that you wanted to pray this prayer tonight. So praise the Lord. The Bible says that when you give your life to Jesus, that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are now, you've gone from the kingdom of darkness and you have been transposed into the kingdom of light. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Maggie, for your gift. Thank you so much. But you are a new creation in Christ. That means that you now have received the Holy Spirit who will guide you, who will teach you. And if you don't, you feel like I don't feel any different, that's okay because you, there, it's a learning process. It's a growing process. But the moment that you receive Jesus, you are saved. If you continue to follow him and learn from him, and then he will teach you how to walk in the light. Praise the Lord. So it's important, please, if you are new and you've never seen me before, please follow so that I can teach you and we can talk and we can learn about following Jesus. That's a huge part of my ministry. 
a, a portion of my ministry is just sharing the gospel and getting people saved so that we have more people coming with us to heaven. I don't want anybody to go to hell. And so that is a huge portion. So thank you for all of you who have partnered with me in that and sharing the gospel and getting it out there. But also another portion of what my ministry is, is to disciple the people who do come to Jesus who are brand new, or maybe you've known God for a long time, but you've never heard his voice. You've never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't know how to pray. Then this is why I do this because I was there for a very long time. I knew the Lord my whole life, but I, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to be really led by the spirit and what it meant to walk in authority and not have to deal with demonic attacks like reoccurring nightmares and things that that even Christians deal with they say well I came to the Lord and I gave my life to the Lord but I'm still struggling with this sin and I'm still in bondage to this and I can't stop doing that and and all these attacks from the enemy and they don't realize that at once you have Jesus you the Bible says that the one who is in you meaning Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is more powerful than him who is in the world, which is Satan and his demons and his kingdom of darkness. So the moment that you receive Jesus, you now have that authority like Jesus had because he gave it to you as his child. So this is a huge portion of what I want to do through these broadcasts. Um, So thank you for all of you who have sewn into the ministry to allow me to continue to do this, to get the equipment that I need um, so that we're not dropping out on you guys all the time and um, everything. And and also, I wanted to be able to feed children around the world. So if you have partnered with my ministry ever by giving through Venmo, PayPal, Facebook, on my website, any of the ways that are the option um, in the comments there, then let me tell you from last month, we fed 130 kids, which equaled 3,900 meals that we were able to distribute to, to starving children around the world. So thank you for partnering with me in that. If you want to partner, I have a huge goal, but just for next month, I would love to be able to feed 150 kids for the whole month, which is 4,500 meals. And I know that we can do it um, by partnering together and just being the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. So thank you for sharing this. Thank you for um, your giving and and watching and all of that. Um, I do think I'm going to stop here because we're going into Psalms 23 next. And I really want to start the next broadcast with that and give it as much time as it deserves. But like I said in the next couple of weeks that I'm going to be, I'm just sharing my testimony. I haven't decided yet whether next week or the week after that, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on my heart. Um, to share my one-year anniversary of how I got started sharing the gospel. If you feel like, I want to share the gospel, I need to, I have all of this inside of me that the Lord has been teaching me, and I need to get it out there into the world, um, then just send me a, a direct message for now, and I will let you know how I got started doing that, but I am going to be doing a whole broadcast on that. Um, But please feel free to direct message me just the word preach or something or souls and just let me know that you are interested in sharing the gospel as well. Because like I said, I've only been doing this for one year and it's been amazing. I think we've seen 4,500 salvations, probably more, but there's like 4,500 confirmed salvations just in this last year. So I want to get that to 100,000 by the end of the year. So if you want to help me push and help me do that. Um, and let's just get people saved and into heaven. Praise the Lord. So let me pray for you. If you have prayer requests, since I ended with my reading a little bit earlier than I normally would, let's just take some time to pray together. So if you have prayer requests, anything specific, then I'm going to be praying for you. And if you prayed that salvation prayer with me, then go to my website. It's tracycoston, C-O-S-T-O-N dot com. And then and uh, click on the button I just got saved and I'm going to send you a free PDF to learn more, help you in your walk with the Lord. Cole asks, how did you get saved? So I got saved when I was probably six years old and it was because my parents were believers and they just taught us, they took us to church, they taught us about the Lord, who he is and um, they just explained to me about how I needed a savior, how we are all born sinners and that I needed to be saved um, by Jesus Christ because otherwise 
you know, they taught me about hell and the separation from God and all of that. And I just saw the good effects. I saw what it was like to live a life just by observing my parents and the people that they walked in circles with other believers. And I saw how loving they were, how patient they were um, compared to other people who didn't have Jesus in their life. And so that is what I wanted. Even as a young child, that's when I gave my life to him. But I have my full testimony on YouTube. If you want to hear how I went from um, growing up a Christian, but not walking in the power and the boldness and um, having the boldness, I guess, or the confidence to pray for people, see people get healed, and even see people be delivered of demons, all the things that the Bible talks about. Um, that was a huge part of my desire growing up was to see people be healed just like Jesus would pray for people and they would be healed or just like he would pray for people and they'd be delivered of demons. I wanted to do that same thing because Jesus said that he gives his uh, children, his followers, that same authority. And so I wasn't seeing that happen in my, in my own life. So I had to dedicate myself to prayer and really go after it. So my full testimony is on YouTube. You can go, it's Tracy Coaston um, on YouTube and you can find that there. Maybe I can share it in the chat after we're done and you can watch it. But I believe that all believers can be doing that. All believers can be praying for people and see them get saved, healed, delivered. That's why my title is or my tagline is saved, healed, delivered, because um, all believers can be doing those things. Those are signs that the Bible says will follow those who believe, right? Amen. So let me just pray for you. Thank you for your gift, Deborah. Thank you so much for partnering. If there are any specific prayer requests, I saw some earlier, but I will pray for you. Aaron, I will pray for you. Let me pray for that. Okay. So, Father God, I pray for Aaron right now. Lord, you see his relationships. You see his friendships. God, I pray that he will have godly friendships in his life, that the ones that belong will be restored. God, that the ones who do not belong, Lord, you will heal his heart of and that you will protect his heart from anyone in the future. God, who doesn't belong in his life. But I pray that the people who do belong in his life, God, will come from the east, the west, the north, the south, God, that you will draw them to him, the godly relationships that will build him up in his faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for Deborah. Father God, whatever has entered her home, Lord, whatever that open door is, I pray that you would reveal that to her. God, show her where it is coming from. God, I thank you that she has heard your word tonight, God, that she is going to be praying for a cleansed heart. Lord, that um, nothing can come against her, Lord, that you cannot deliver her from. So I thank you, Lord, that you are going to speak to her, show her what she needs to release to you in the name of Jesus, renounce herself from, and I command that darkness to leave her home right now in the name of Jesus. Jerry, Father God, I pray for that back pain and that stomach pain. Lord, I thank you that you supernaturally healed me of stomach pain years ago from a word from the Lord. So I speak to Jerry's back and I speak to his stomach right now in the name of Jesus that it will be healed, whatever is causing that pain. I thank you, Jesus, for the blood that covers these, Lord, that you took lashes on your back for our healing. And so I thank you that Jerry will be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. God, I pray for Tyler and I pray this for everyone, Father God, all of those people who need godly relationships in their life, godly friendships. God, I pray that you would um, show them where they belong, a, a church that family, God, that they can belong to. Lord, I thank you that you are going to bring destiny helpers into their life. Lord, whatever um, people need to come in to help them walk in the will of God. Lord, I pray that those people are released into their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for Adriana's son, Christian, Father, that you will release that tongue tie. Lord, I thank you that you see him, that you have your loving eye on him. I thank you that you have walked with them. And I pray, God, that this would be a moment of a testimony 
for Adriana to be able to tell others of the goodness of God, that he may not even need surgery, Lord, that you will touch his mouth, that that tongue tie will be reversed and released so that Adriana can give glory to God and see many people come to know him just through that powerful testimony in the name of Jesus and for her to have the boldness to share it when it happens. Thank you, Jesus. If I am praying for you, please receive it in faith as a word from the Lord. You can stand and believe that God is a healer. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. So when I pray for you, receive it in faith because you know that it's God's will for you because God always desires. You see Jesus going around and everyone who came to him and asked received healing. Every single person. There's not an instant in the Bible where Jesus said no to somebody. Even the one person that he did originally say no to, she continued to push and ask. And he was so amazed at her faith that he said, okay. And he granted her desire. So receive it in faith. And you can even feel it in your body. If I'm praying for an area of your body or you can, couldn't move something, I want you to test it and feel for it and see if something feels different and expect to receive. The Bible says that when you pray, but if you doubt in your heart, then you shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord because you're double-minded. And it says that you'll be thrown and tossed by the wind. So when you pray... When, because we know we're praying according to the will of God, then you should expect to receive from God. Lord, I pray for Sarah right now. I pray for her throat to be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that she will not deal with this. She will not battle with this anymore, God, that even as she is watching, Lord, that she will feel the release, that that sore throat is gone, that torment is gone in the name of Jesus. For Noel, God, I pray for that back pain. Anybody with back pain, I command that back pain to leave now in the name of Jesus. Lord, and I thank you that you say that any time you say this in your word, God, we take you at your word. You say any time we ask for wisdom that you will not withhold it from us. So I thank you, God, that Noel is asking for godly wisdom and direction from you and that she has it according to the will of God, according to the word of God now in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Anybody with migraines, Jasmine, and all that stomach pain, I'm seeing a lot of stomach pains, and this is something that the Lord healed me of, so I know that he will do it for you because he is no respecter of persons. So anyone with stomach pain, I command that pain out now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. Lord, that they would even feel your heat going into their stomach and melting and relaxing all of those muscles and all of those in intestines, God, that you are putting it back together the way that it is meant to be. Lord, I pray for anybody with migraines right now, those headaches that come and torment these people. I command that tormenting spirit to leave them alone now in the name of Jesus. If there is anything, God, that they need to repent of, that they need to turn away from, God, I thank you that you are going to show them the thought patterns that are tormenting them that they need to release to you tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus. Anywhere, God, that they are not standing on your word, anywhere that they are partnering with fear, anywhere that they are partnering with the spirit of anxiety, God, those spirits are not from you. Those are unclean spirits. So we command them to go as they release them to you and receive your healing of migraines. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. God, I pray for that young man in Rhonda's church, God, who loves you, who serves you. God, I command that cancer to leave his body now in the name of Jesus. God, that he will be fully restored, that he will be able to tell this testimony and see so many people come to know you because of his testimony. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for it. God, I pray for voices to be restored. I thank you, Lord, for the testimony of a man in my church, a worship leader, God, who had cancer in his throat. And when he got it removed, God, that you spoke to him and you said that his voice 
would still continue to sing and it would be the voice coming from the throne of heaven even though he wasn't supposed to sing this man in my church wasn't supposed to be able to sing wasn't he's his talking voice was even messed up after this surgery and guess what happened a woman pr prophesied over him and that's exactly what the lord said is that he would sing and that the the sound would be of heaven and he does sound beautiful and when he went to his doctor and he said I can sing now. And the doctor said, that's impossible. You can't sing. I, I saw the surgery. You know, he's been following up with him. But he sang for him in the doctor's office. And the doctor said, wait a second. And he put a, a, a video camera down his throat, essentially a little camera down there to watch as he was singing with this down his throat. And he said, this is impossible. Your vocal cords are not even moving. So that is a miracle of a man that I personally know. I want you to receive that for yourself and just know that God is the God of miracles. When you believe in faith, what his word says for anybody else who needs to receive healing, these things happen. They are miracles. They stump doctors every single day. They don't know how it happens. It is the hand of God who is a healer. So Lord, I pray for Rachel right now for speedy recovery, God, that even as she is probably laying in bed recovering from gallbladder surgery, God, that she is going to have supernatural strength infused into her body. Uh, she will be recovering supernaturally quickly, God, that as she goes for a checkup whenever she goes next, God, that they will not even believe what they see with their eyes of how healed she is because she is receiving this from the hand of God. We thank you, Lord. I pray for Kurt, God, who's having issues with his blood. No more in the name of Jesus. I pray that it will turn around now. Whatever tormenting spirit is messing with that, God, whatever is off in his body, I pray that it is corrected now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. Thank you for it. Wow, there's so many more requests. I'm going to try to get to all these. Anybody with neck pain, I command that neck pain to go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you see every ache and pain, God. And as these people grow closer to you and they push into worship and praise and and hearing your voice, Lord, that they that they will be touched by the presence of the Lord, even now through this live stream, God, that they will feel the electricity running through their bodies. If you feel a touch from the Lord, if you're feeling emotional, if you're feeling electricity running through your body, if you're feeling heat or cold somewhere in your body where you're asking for healing, that is the hand of the Lord touching you and receive it in faith now. I love this request from Lauren who wants to grow in faith and worship in Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you are calling people right now to make a choice, to not be lukewarm. God, that was my testimony, going from lukewarm to on fire and never turning back in the name of Jesus. I pray for the supernatural fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon Lauren and light them on fire for you, Jesus that they will feel it, that they will receive that baptism, God, of boldness and power that they long for, that they will stand strong in their faith and understanding as they hear the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know if this is touching you. Make sure to share it in case somebody else needs to be touched by the healing hand of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And let me just say that my prayer for you, as I am praying for you, I do... Um, Oh yeah, let me pray for Donna, very low thyroid and iron. I pray for that to turn around. I've dealt with low iron before, God, and I pray that that will be healed in the name of Jesus, just like you healed me, Father God. I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. I pray, Jerry, right now that the baptism of the Holy Spirit would come upon you, that you would press in until you receive it. Because let me tell you, it's the one thing that completely changed my walk with Christ. You can know God your whole life, but if you never have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just like um, I believe it was uh, Paul who came to a group of believers and said, and they, they were believers. They had believed in Jesus. They had placed their faith in Jesus. And he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you gave your lives to Jesus? And they said, no, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And he said, okay, well, what baptism did you receive? They, they said, well, we received the baptism of John. And he said that John is the, 
the baptism of repentance, but now we need the baptism of the spirit of Jesus, of fire and of power. And so he laid his hands on them and prayed and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began praying in tongues and speaking in tongues and it changed everything. And so this is what I, this is what changed for me when I received the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon me, the fire, that baptism is something that I pray for you. So Holy Spirit, I pray for anybody. If you want this, then just type in the chat. I want the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to pray that you will be able to experience this. It might not happen right in this moment. You may not feel anything right in this moment, but you may tomorrow wake up and feel completely different. Or you might feel it right now as I'm praying for you. You may feel like electricity, may feel like heat. You may just get emotional. However the Lord speaks to you, it can happen in a lot of different ways. You may feel the love of God like Joseph is right now. Praise God. So let me just pray for you. If you have a desire to be on fire for the Lord, to not be lukewarm anymore, to not be half in with the world and half in with God, and I'm going to pray for you. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon these people in a way that they have never experienced you before, God. Look at all these people, Lord, who want your power, God. They want to feel your touch. They want the boldness. They want to to go all in for Jesus and never look back. They want the boldness to share with their friends and family who need you, Lord God, that they don't want them to go to hell. They want them to go to heaven, but they need the power of the Holy Spirit to speak through them in the moment that it's needed. So right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would baptize your people in fire. Lord, search their hearts. Know that they are faithful and true and that they truly desire you. I thank you for it, God. I pray if you are feeling the Holy Spirit, let me know in the chat. Yes, Steve, you can receive more infillings of the Holy Spirit. Um, I've felt it many times. I pray that it would come upon them strongly, Lord, that they would know that it is you, that they would have no doubt that you are with them and that you are working through them and for them, God, that you are setting them apart from the world, that you are calling them to a higher place, that you are calling them for more than what they are doing right in this moment, God, that you have a purpose and a plan for every single person who is watching. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all so much for being on with me tonight. Um, I could just go on and on, but I'm going to cut here um, and let you go back to whatever it is that you were doing. But I thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for partnering with me and um, sowing into the ministry. This has been so powerful. Don't forget to share before you jump off, even if you're just sharing to your story so that more people can see it and be prayed for and be led by the Holy Spirit, possibly receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all the things that are life changing um, when the Holy Spirit will, will come upon them. So I thank you for partnering. Don't forget to go to my website if you want to learn more about me, tracycoaston.com, and um, just see more of the vision, more of the ministry. And thank you again for sharing and um, giving gifts and all the things that you do to bless me as well. So next week I will be back and we will be doing more of the Psalms and or maybe I'll be sharing my testimony, my year long journey of being on social media and um, getting to do this is such an honor. So I love you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you next.